in First Kings chapter 10 and First Chronicles chapter 9, we see an amazing story about the Queen of Sheba. She hears of the fame of King Solomon and sets out to meet him and ask him hard questions. And as you probably know, Solomon is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. His reign as king pictures the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we study this story, I want you to imagine the Queen of Sheba as a lost sinner today and imagine Solomon as the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to title this study, The Most Famous Being in Existence. And that being is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. So I just want to take a few minutes to brag on him. So 1 Kings 10 1 says that when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to, to prove him with hard questions. Notice it says concerning the name of the Lord. Because as the song says, there is something about that name. And she has heard of the fame of Solomon. And we're talking about the most famous being in existence. Solomon being a type of that most famous being. But do you remember when you heard of the fame of the Lord Jesus Christ? What are you doing now since that time to make him more famous? What are you doing to make him more famous than he already is? Have you told someone about him? Have you published the good things he does and proclaimed his saving power to somebody else? But this Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, and she came to prove him with hard questions. And Solomon is a wise man. Uh, 1 Kings 10.23 says, So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ, he's King of kings, he's Lord of lords. He surpasses every king and everything. And the Lord Jesus Christ speaks about the Queen of Sheba, and King Solomon in Matthew twelve forty two, it says, The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. The Lord said that he is greater than Solomon. And just like the queen of Sheba approached Solomon with hard questions, people have always done this to the Lord. The Pharisees did it. We do it. And people will do it at the great white throne judgment. But there's not going to be a question that the Lord can't answer. But the queen of Sheba is curious. She is ready for the truth. And this is what you call the tipping off place. When you have a sinner so curious and so ready to accept the truth that you just have to give them a little nudge. And then they'll, they'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And as soul winners... Uh, we also should be ready to answer hard questions. First Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now First Kings 10.2 says, And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels and that, that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones, and she was come to Solomon. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. Notice that this isn't a poor woman. She has riches. She has many material things. She is bringing some things to give as gifts to King Solomon. Just like the nations will be bringing gifts to the Lord Jesus Christ in the Millennial Kingdom. But nothing compare, can compare to what Solomon already has. Just like nothing can compare to what Jesus Christ already has. But this brings us to our first point. The most famous being in existence, the Lord Jesus Christ has everlasting possessions. And God will give Israel their land as an everlasting possession. As Christians, we can also earn rewards and crowns and things that won't fade away, that are everlasting. And we can get these things at the judgment seat of Christ. And all the Queen of Sheba had was nothing compared to what Solomon already had. All we have is nothing compared to what Jesus Christ has and what he can give us. And lost sinners may have a lot of nice things, but nothing can, can compare to, to what Jesus Christ has and what he can give them. And when I got saved, I realized this world really has nothing to offer. It has nothing compared to what the Lord Jesus Christ can give me. But it says in verse 2 that she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And this is significant. This is also what the Lord wants. 
He wants you to come to him from the heart. Romans 10.10 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto the righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. The Lord is looking at your heart. Now, 1 Kings 10.3, it says, And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. So this brings us to our next point. The most famous being in existence, the Lord Jesus Christ, has infinite wisdom. Solomon had a lot of wisdom, but the Lord Jesus Christ has infinite wisdom. Notice it says, referring to Solomon, there was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. And Solomon shows us something about the Lord Jesus Christ because nothing's hid from him either. Proverbs 15.3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The Lord sees everything. He knows everything. Psalms 147.5 says, Great is our Lord, and of great power his understanding is infinite. He has infinite wisdom, infinite understanding and knowledge. Revelation 7, 11 through 12 says, And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. And this is because he's got infinite wisdom, infinite understanding, infinite knowledge. He's the one that deserves glory and thanksgiving and honor. But did it ever occur to you that nothing ever occurred to God? And do you realize that the Lord is smarter than every genius put together? The Lord is the one who put wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the heads of Solomon and Daniel, the wisest men in the Bible. So the most famous being in the universe has everlasting possessions, and he has infinite wisdom and understanding. And next, he is also omnipresent. The verse said, nothing was hid from Solomon. Nothing is hid from the Lord. We have a God who has all the answers. And did you know our God knows more Bible than Clarence Larkin, J. Vernon McGee, C.I. Schofield, Peter S. Ruckman and the devil all rolled into one and put together. If you put the minds of the greatest Bible teachers or scholars that ever lived and wrote them all into one, he know, the Lord knows more Bible than all those people put together. The Lord Jesus Christ was smarter than all the doctors and uh, all those people that had authority back when he roamed the earth. They were amazed at his understanding. And they would gather around him just to hear him teach. God knows more than every genius, every Bible scholar, every Bible teacher put together wrote into one. And God was present in every story of the Bible. He's omnipresent. He was present when Moses and Paul pinned it down, telling them what to write. He knows it from cover to cover because he is the one that wrote it. You say, well, I've sit in some classes under the smartest men in the world. But the Lord has been present in every class of every college that ever existed and allowed the minds of the teacher to learn, understand, and have the ability to teach what they taught. He knows what is in the farthest end of space. He knows what is in the deepest of waters. And it would be awesome to know what was down there in the deeps. And he knows. He knows what's in the deeps under the sea of glass that's above our heads. God's mind is far superior to our mind. Uh, Psalms 139.8 says, If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Daniel 2.22 says, He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. He knows about all the conspiracies. He knows if which ones are right and which ones are false. He knows if something's a false flag and if somebody's lying and causing a mass deception on a group of people. He knows all these things. He knows all the secret things. He knows what's going on in these secret places and these uh, big mansions at places where people are doing evil and wicked things. Um, but back in 1 Kings 10, 4 through 5, it says that when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built and the meat of his table 
and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up into the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. When the queen of Sheba saw the riches of Solomon, it says there was no more spirit in her. She humbled herself before Solomon. Just like when we got saved, we humbled ourselves before the Lord. We realized that he had something we don't have. We realized that we couldn't make it to heaven by our own self-righteousness. 1 Kings 10.4 And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built and the meat of his table, that could be the word of God. When you find out what that what's in that book, after you get saved, you'll be shocked. When you really open that book and look at it, you're going to be shocked. And when she saw the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel, notice Solomon's servants probably wore king's clothing. Just like us, when we get our glorified bodies and fine linen, we're going to be kings, ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ. And when she saw his cupbearers and his ascent, by which he went up into the house of the Lord, notice that word ascent. That brings us to our next point. Our Lord, the most famous being in existence, has ascending power. Notice it says his ascent, by when she went up into the house of the Lord. Ephesians 4.10 says, He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. John 3.13 says, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And at the rapture we are going to ascend up. The same being who went up to heaven by his own power is living in us and will cause us to go up. 1 Kings 10.4 says, And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built. Did you know that the Lord has mm -hmm. built us some mansions? John 14, 2 says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus Christ was a carpenter on earth, and he also created the heavens and everything you see. Imagine the things that he's built and has waiting for you. 1 Kings 10, 6, And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. It was a true report of what the queen of Sheba heard of King Solomon. And it is true what is written about the God of the Bible in his book. In the book of Titus, it says, God that cannot lie. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When everything is around you is a slanderous report, Jesus Christ is a true report. He's the truth. Now, 1 Kings 10, 7 says, Howbeit, I believe not the words. She says, I believe not the words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. The same goes for Thomas. He doubted. He needed to see the prince in the hands of Jesus Christ before he would believe. And also notice that she said, the half was not told me. And this brings us to our next point, and that is, the most famous being is not only omnipresent, he doesn't only have ascending power, he doesn't only have infinite wisdom and everlasting possessions, but he is also a never-ending story. In John twenty-one twenty-five, it says, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written, every one, I suppose that, even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. So there are many books written about people and the things they've accomplished, but you couldn't get enough books to write what all the Lord has done because he's a never-ending story. People study the Bible and they think that they are really something and that they know more than God knows. But do you realize that if the Lord wanted to, he could write a million other different Bibles because he's a never-ending story. He could write a million other Bibles and make them the Word of God. He could pres preserve and inspire those and make those the Word of God. There was probably millions of other stories Old Test that happened back in the Old Testament times he could have included in the Bible. There's uh, way, way more things the Lord Jesus Christ did he could have included in the Bible if he wanted to. He just chose not to. There's things that could have happened 
back in eternity before he created the earth he could have wrote down if he wanted to and made those be the pres pre inspired and preserved word of god and there's and there's more things that happen are going to happen in the future he could have wrote down and made those the inspired and preserved word of god he could have wrote a million other bibles that you would have to sit down and study and learn so don't think you know more than god just because you know a little something in the Bible. Because God's the one that wrote the Bible, not you. So that shows that you have no right to correct the Bible. The Bible is perfect. He chose to preserve it from generation forever. Uh, Job 9, 2 through 10 says, I know it is so of a truth, but how should man be just with God if he will contend with him? He cannot answer him one of a thousand. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered, which removeth the mountains, and they know not, which overturneth them in his anger, which shaketh the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tremble, which commandeth the sun and it riseth not and sealeth up the stars, which alone spreadeth out the heavens and treadeth upon the waves of the sea, which maketh Arcturus, Orion, and Pallades and the chambers of the south, which doeth great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. Romans eleven thirty three. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. And I can't wrap my head around a never-ending story. Not only that, but the, He is a story that never had a beginning. He created the beginning. He isn't bound by time and space and matter. And you can't have matter without space to put it in. And you can't have space and matter without time because they had to begin somewhere. They had to begin in time. But the Lord is outside of all these things. He isn't bound by these things. And that's why He has always been here. We don't understand that because our minds only understand things in time. So we can't comprehend Him. But 1 Kings 10, 7 says, She says, I, Howbeit I believe not the words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. Is the Lord not better than you thought he was when you were a lost person? After you got saved, did the Lord not turn out to be better than you thought he was? Did the Bible not turn out to be the most amazing book ever written? Did he not exceed the fame which you heard? Was he not even greater than you ever thought he would be? You just thought the Bible was a bunch of names and kitty stories to read before you got saved. And then you open the book, you open the King James Bible, and you found out it's the most amazing book and nothing can compare to it. The Lord Jesus Christ in his book exceeded the fame which you heard. 1 Kings 10, 8 says, Happy are thy men, happy are thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. The queen of Sheba could see that Solomon's servants were happy. He was a good master. They sat under him while he preached. Ecclesiastes calls him the preacher. They were happy to sit under him and be his servants. And lost people should see how happy we are to serve Jesus Christ. And this brings us to our next thought, and that is the Lord is a delightful master. 1 Kings 10, 9 says, Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice. God delighted in Solomon to make him king over Israel. He did it because he loved Israel. The Father delights in the Son. And the Lord Jesus Christ is going to reign from Jerusalem. He's going to be king of kings and lord of lords. And he's going to be doing judgment and justice. But serving God should be pleasant. Romans 7.22 says, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Uh, Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Psalm 16.11 says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. It's a delightful thing to serve God. 
and let him be your master. Isaiah 26, 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Now back to 1 Kings and chapter 10 and verse 9. The Lord thy God which delighteth in thee, to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel forever. Therefore made he thee king to do judgment and justice. The Lord is going to do some judgment, some judging at the white throne and at the judgment seat of Christ and the judgment of the nations. When he comes back at the second coming, he will smite the nations and he's going to rule them with the rod of iron. First Kings 10.10 10 says, And she gave the king an hundred and twenty talents of gold and of spices, very great store and precious stones. There came no more such abundance of spices as these which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. The queen of Sheba had the honor of giving Solomon a gift. We are going to have the honor of giving crowns and thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ when we go with him into his kingdom. But this has been a study on the character of Queen of Sheba and the story of her going to talk to King Solomon. And we've looked at the most famous being in existence which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you need, you need to be ready and prepared to meet him at his coming. He's coming back in a rapture, and then he's coming at a second coming. And you need to be ready. The Bible says in Revelation 22:20, 20, it says, Even so come, Lord Jesus.